All I know about the guy who invented the marking knife is that his name may or may not have been Mark. And he didn't come up with the idea on his own. In fact, striking knives have been used in wood and metal working as long as wood and metal have been worked. A striking knife looks very much like a chisel with a recklessly pointy rear end. They were usually around half an inch wide with a skewed bevel on one end for cutting across the grain and an all point on the other end for marking along the grain and accidentally poking out eyes. Strangely enough, despite once having a place in every tool chest, you almost never see an old striking knife in an antique shop or a flea market. I think the reason is only a woodworker would know what they are. When the old timer died and the grandkids got hold of it, they probably wore them out opening paint cans and then tossed them away. Actually, striking knives are really handy around the shop, but they're pointy on both ends. That can be murder in the apron pocket. I mean, you're either going to get cut or you're going to get poked. That's why I like to keep my knives and my awls separate. And that's what we're going to do right after this. I've got some cherry turning stock that I got uh, that I'm going to use for this. I think it'll look pretty nice. Now the length, I guess that's just what you're comfortable with. I mean, you use a pencil around the shop, you know how long is handy in your finger. So I say this is about six inches long. And the width, oh, well, you want it to be as wide as whatever your blade is. So I'm just going to rip this right down the middle. We are all set to drill, right dead center. And I don't know, about a um, quarter inch, I'd say, maybe a little smaller. Drill it about an inch or so deep. It's all right if you go too deep. It's most important to just go straight. And isn't that beautiful? And that's what the tang on our blade is going to fit into. And for blades, we are just loaded with options. You can use a reciprocating saw blade. These things are nice. They're good hard steel. And if you get the ones that are designed for demolition, like to cut down a whole house, then they're actually pretty thick. And that makes a good blade. So you can use one of those. Um, if you want a really narrow blade, you can use a jigsaw blade. I also like to use these scratch stocks that come from Hawk Tools. They're just the right size. They come four to a package for like five or six bucks. So they're pretty cheap and it's a good high grade carbon steel which is soft enough to file or grind and shape but hard enough to keep an edge. And that's really what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and get grinding and um, I'm going to bet you don't want to see me sweat. So I'll check back in with you as soon as I get it shaped. Bevel's up to you. Some marking knives come with a spear point like this Swedish made one. I prefer a single bevel simply because it's easier to sharpen and I find it a little more comfortable to use. But the downside is it only cuts in one direction. Since the flat side has to be up against the guide, you have to change the way you draw the knife across the surface based on whether you're working on the right or the left of a straight edge. If you find it awkward, you may prefer a spear pointed knife, which works in both directions. Really, it all comes down to what's going to be comfortable to use with your hands as you're marking. And, you know, straight um, up and down is not good, but if you're at too much of an angle, you're going to have trouble as you come down over the edge of a board because it's going to twist your wrist and probably break it off. So I would go with something like uh, 45 degrees or so, and, you know, you can always make another one if you don't like it. And as far as your bevel, well, I don't know, uh, maybe like, 20, 25 degrees. Uh, don't get out your protractor or anything. I mean, it's not that big a deal. You, you just want it sharp. And the back flat, you know the drill. And before you put this nice sharp bevel beauty in the end of your handle stock, you're going to want to clean this up a little bit. If you got a lathe, you can throw it on there, or you could just hit it with some rasps. At the very least, you're going to want to chamfer the edges a little bit. Um, you could do that with a hand plane or just a block plane. You can use a spoke shave if you want. Uh, this is really awfully thick, what we have here. So I'm gonna work on that a little bit. I might even cut it out with a back saw and then clean it up with a hand plane and just try to find something that's comfortable in my hand. And when you get a shape you like, it's time for the main event, to put the blade in the handle. The tang is of course wider than it is thin 
You want that to go with the grain. Don't wedge it across the grain. You're going to split your handle. Hopefully it'll fit nice and tight right into your bench top like that. It's probably not the greatest idea, but now that you've got this sweet looking marking knife, it's time to make it a friend and all. I'm not going to get into how to do it because it's basically the same thing as the marking knife. You just drill the hole in the end of the stock, except this time, instead of going through all that mess to make a blade, get yourself a screwdriver, jam it in the hole, cut the end of the screwdriver off, and sharpen it to a nice point. It's that easy. Now all that's left to do is maybe clean up the handles, throw on a coat of oil, whatever you're into. When I get back, I'm going to show you all the things you can do with a marking knife and an all. Pencils are great, but they just make lines. And unless your point is super fine, those lines aren't going to be terribly accurate. A marking knife and an awl are far more accurate and much more versatile, and not just for the reasons you may think. Not only can their razor sharp point get all the way up to the edge, but they leave an actual physical reference point in the wood itself, which you can use as a guide for your tools. Let's say you want a handsaw 10. A sharp marking knife can make a nice deep kerf right where you want your saw to cut. You can even widen the kerf up a bit with a second slice of the marking knife. Now you have a dead accurate place to start your saw without having to worry about it slipping out of position. Even a quick V-notch on the corner of the board can make all the difference in getting an accurate start when cross-cutting. If you're having trouble following the line along the cross-cut, cutting a kerf with your marking knife will give the blade a path of least resistance to follow and make a straight cut a lot easier. And if you continue your line around the board and even across the bottom face, you can virtually eliminate tear up. Marking knives are great for severing across the grain, but they tend to wander when you try to work along the grain. That's what the scratch all is for. Several light passes will establish a kerf without wandering with the grain away from the straight edge. Really, the uses for your marking knife and your scratch all are only limited by your imagination. We're talking real versatility here, which is pretty good with a couple of tools you can make yourself.